In this video, I'm gonna try and cover everything you need in order to protect yourself from radiation in nuclear tech mode. This will include detection, armors, the protection value, how to increase that protection value, all of the consumables, and finally, how to clean up highly radioactive mass which is formed by either Xernox or RBMK, and also how to deal with highly radioactive items. So yeah, hopefully this guide will be helpful and without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. For detecting radiation in this mod, we have the Geiger counter, the handheld variant and the normal block variant. As soon as you have the handheld variant in your inventory, a bar will appear in the bottom left corner of your screen which will show the accumulated radiation and it will show you four values by right clicking. The junk radiation, environmental radiation, the contamination which is basically the accumulated radiation by the player and the player resistance which is obtained by using armors or by consuming red X. So let's take a look at different values which are shown by the Geiger counter. Starting with the junk radiation and environmental radiation. So for example, I'm gonna take this plutonium 239 block which is going to emit 50 rats per second. And if I place this block in this chunk, then this chunk is going to be irradiated. As you can see, all of the grass will turn into dead grass and uh, yeah, now this chunk is irradiated as shown by the Geiger counter. The environmental radiation is just behind that chunk radiation and walking into this chunk will irradiate you as well and you will start accumulating radiation. So that's how you irradiate a chunk by placing down a radioactive block. But if I take this block and I place it in my inventory, then I will take all of the 50 rats per second emitted by. This will basically contribute to environmental radiation but not necessarily to the chunk radiation. Now if for example I place down a crate or a chest any inventory here and then I place down this radioactive block inside that inventory then it kind of counts like how it was in your inventory. So this will not irradiate this chunk and it will not count towards the environmental radiation as well. So placing down radioactive blocks in crates like this will basically protect the chunk. But if for example you break that grid and you place it in your inventory then it's like having that radioactive block like you had it before. So yeah you will start accumulating radiation once again but it will not irradiate the chunk or yeah the environment. And uh, now we have weakness too because we have accumulated radiation. So here are all of the values you can pause the video right now. What happens when you basically accumulate a specific number of reds and the effects that are gonna come with it. This is from the Wikipedia page for nuclear tech mod. Now starting with armors for protection. So as you can see, all of the different armor pieces have a radiation resistance value. Different armor pieces means different resistance value. The hazmat suit is less value. The high performance hazmat suit has very high value. So by wearing these pieces, you will basically add up all of the resistance value and it will give you a percentage number. So right now you can see the player resistance is 74.88% and with the high performance one, we have 99% radiation resistance. That means that any radioactive block will only give its 1% radiation to us. 99% will be omitted. So 100 radiation per second is only giving us 1 radiation per second. Iron and gold armor have a resistance value of 5.04%. Then we have the steel and titanium armor with 9.84%. Advanced alloy has 14.88%. Next up we have cobalt with 25.01%. Now jumping up in value we have the hazmat suit with a value of 74.88%. Next up security armor 85.03%. And at 89.99% we have the T45, trench master and advanced hazmat suit. Now Lunar Cybernetic Armor will give 93.69% and next up we have Steam Suit, Steel Ranger, AJR Power Armor, CMB Steel Armor and Star Metal Armor. All of these have a value of 94.98%. The PA Hazmat Suit has 98%, the Remnants Power Armor, MITI, Environmental Suit and High Performance have 99%, the HEV Mark IV 99.49, Liquidator 99.6, Sherbidium at 99.89 and the finally FAW armor and DNT at 99.99. But these are the base values. These can be increased using dash cladding or basically any cladding. There are a total of four types. So for an example, I'm gonna take high performance. It has a base value of 99, but if I increase its value using claddings, then here yeah, you can see the radiation resistance value going up. And these claddings can be used with every armor piece. 
So yeah, now we have a total radiation resistance of 99.84, which is just below sherbidium. So that is why claddings are pretty useful. And as I told you, we have rubber, lead, dash, and erosium. So these are the four types of cladding available with each their different value. Another way to increase the res resistance is using red edge. So it will increase the radiation resistance by 0.2 for a total of three minutes. So right now we have a value of 99.84. And if I consume red X, then this value will go up to 99.89. And we will have this effect for a total of three minutes. Now this value is equivalent to a sherbidium armor. So basically we bought the high performance armor to sherbidium armor. And this is useful for picking up extremely radioactive substances, like for example, the Balefire egg. So if I have the red X, and the high performance armor with all of dash cladding, I can pick up a balefire egg for a total of three seconds without dying. And placing it in a crate, and as you can see, I have only accumulated around 405 radiation. Now, in order to get rid of radiation, the accumulated radiation, we have red aways, a total of three, red away, strong red away, and elite red away, which take away 104, 350, and 1000 radiation points respectively. So if I consume a strong red away, which takes away 350 radiation points, then we will end up with what, 55 reds, because we started with 405 and this took away 350. And consuming a normal red away will completely make it disappear. Then we have the player decontaminator, because red aways are consumables, you can only use them one time. So if for example you have accumulated a lot of radiation, then the decontaminator will get rid of it at 10 reds per second. The more there are, the better it is. So it works really well as a base entrance or a nuclear power plant entrance. So just by standing on this, you can get rid of all of the accumulated radiation that you have. So these blocks are very handy. Finally, we have the radiation absorbers, total four tiers. I have placed down radioactive barrels and they have irradiated a three by three chunk area. And the closer you get in, the more radiation there is. So by placing down the radiation absorber, you can get rid of the chunk radiation or at least control it and minimize it. So as you can see, the chunk radiation values have come down compared to what they were before. And if I get rid of all of the nuclear barrels, this will completely get rid of all of the radiation in that chunk. And finally, we have the containment box. Containment box is pretty important as it severely decreases the amount of radiation emitted. So from 1200 reds per second, we came down to 34 reds per second, which is a drastic change to say the least. So that's why containment box is very important when it comes to picking up extremely radioactive substances like the Bellfire Egg or a lot of depleted nuclear fuel blocks or fuel rods, for example. All right, so that was all about containment. Now let's start and take a look on how to clean up radiation or basically meltdowns. So here I have exploded a Xenox reactor, but the process for Xenox is pretty much straightforward. I'm going to use a high performance armor with dash claddings and also the speed upgrades. First of all, pick up every chunk that there is on the perimeter and you can make a three by three area like this of decontaminators. Once you have picked up all of these small chunks, so that you don't accidentally pick them up when you're walking around in your world, we can get rid of the main destroyed Xernox body. And Xernox actually doesn't really give off that much radiation. So cleaning it up shouldn't be very difficult to say the least. And once you break the Xernox, it will give you all of the respective pieces. And now all that you need to do is get rid of all of the fallout, which can be done with a shovel so that you can use this in a generator the radiation generator and once you basically quickly get rid of fallout and place down some radiation absorbers in here that should prevent from basically that should prevent fallout from generating further and uh, here we go i'm going to place down some radiation absorbers and uh, yeah this process did take some time like 20 minutes but at the end you can see there is nearly no radiation in the chunk and this environmental radiation that you can see is from the fallout. So this was the Xenox cleanup. It is simple compared to an RBMK cleanup because when it comes to RBMK, the radiation values reach like very high level. 
they sometimes go over 75,000 rats per second. So here we have an RBMJ explosion and this time I'm gonna go with a liquid data suit instead of the high performance hazmat suit. So the process is going to be the same but this time I'm going to build a decontaminator area first, going to place a crate near it and pick up all of the chunks from the perimeter. The most important chunks that you need to pick up are the fuel rod, the broken fuel chunks as this will be used in making the liquidator metal which is an armor modification that gives you what 10 negative 10 reds per second so yeah this is important now breaking corbel stone and corium is difficult as it takes time with a normal pickaxe so i recommend you use a pickaxe which gives you speed which gives you haste and also use that armor modification for haste so that you can quickly get rid of them but if you work in this area for like a long amount of time then you will have permanent nausea and weakness because the gas mask which are installed will basically go away and so will your consumables so once there was permanent nausea i just died respawned quickly and then made a bridge and this time used a null grenade to get rid of the remaining corium and the destroyed rbmk pieces because as I told you, the main blocks here will be the fuel rod, which will be used to make the uh, liquidator metal armor modification. So once you have properly placed down a null grenade here, it will get rid of the destroyed blocks. And then you can get rid of all of the fallout. But if you're not going to recycle or use any of the components, then there's always the option of using a four Wagner weapon to get rid of the entire reactor along with its surrounding to get rid of the radiation. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, peace out and stay safe.